Giants at Vikings. Minnesota will be hosting this game where they're a 3-3 three, three point favorite. Justin said earlier in the season, the biggest, the most important home field advantage is in Minnesota. There is nothing more important for that Viking team than to get to play with that home crowd, the school chance, and really in that environment. A natural, comfy dome to really make her cousins feel his best at noon. What a better time for Kirk to show out and eliminate Brian Day Ball and the New York Football Giants. But the New York Giants are playing with some house money in this game. And you know what I'm going to tell you? Daniel Jones, Brian Dable, and this New York Giants defense led by Wink Martindale are going to surprise a lot of people in Minnesota. The Vikings in this game are going to be without Brian O'Neill, one of the best right tackles in football. Shout out to him, Pitt alumni, and Garrett Bradbury, their center as well, is questionable. If he does not play, they'll be down to their third string center. And in the process, the Giants are getting more healthy. Saquon Barkley, Xavier McKinney, Kayvon Thibodeau, Aziz Ojolari, one of the best pass rushers in the NFL. I'm going to tell you guys right now, and I've said it before, the Vikings are frauds. I know a lot of their fans don't want to hear it, and I'm a fan of the team, but there's a reason they're a 13-win squad with a negative point differential. They were the third worst, or the third, the second worst team in the NFC, North, the NFC East. The NFC North, Jesus, John. They probably should not be here hosting a playoff game, and I think we're going to see the Giants on Sunday throw Kirk Cousins off, rattle him in the late moments, and I like their Christmas Eve showing stun the football world. The Giants are being the Minnesota Vikings. Mm. Just Miles? Just Miles, that's it? Do you want, do you, Justin, do you want to go? or? Yeah, I'll go because I figured you have a different take. Um Listen, I think this is the sexiest pick of the week. Everybody's going to pick this one. If we're going to pick an upset, everybody's going the Giants. And, and so am I. I've been high on the Giants train this year. I said they were going to beat Minnesota and Minnesota a couple weeks ago, and they just fell short in what was probably Daniel Jones's best game of the season. Uh, it was the emergence of Isaiah Hodgins as well. Richie James had a great game. Darius Slayton was showing out. Saquon Barkley had a nice game. Um, but I'd like to highlight Daniel Jones. Daniel Jones, that game, was making throws, man. He was making plays, stepping up in the pocket, just reading the field. He was dicing them up. And while he did throw one interception and, and ultimately was knocked out by Kirk Cousins, Kirk Cousins made some big throws when he needed to. And the Giants defense just got absolutely torched by Justin Jefferson and TJ Hawkinson. I think we'll be singing a different tune this Sunday. I expect the Giants to be bringing their A game. I expect Minnesota to struggle out of the gate. And I think the Giants are going to run away with this one. It'll be a close one because I think I just have too much respect for the, the home field advantage of what Minnesota can be with those skull chants. And Justin Jefferson is just so good. TJ Hawkinson has been a great addition for uh, Kirk Cousins. But I do like what the Giants got going on, man. They're just playing with – charisma they play with a uh i don't know they're, they're you could tell that they're brothers out there on that field that they're fighting for one another they're playing for their head coach the giants just feel a little different and i'm not going to jump the gun and say that this team might have a little bit of pixie dust over them like those years in 07 and 11 but they're special and this is the beginning of something that's going to be a Years of success with Brian Dable. Um, so I'm going to roll with uh, Daniel Jones, Saquon Barkley, and those Giants. I do think they get it done here on the road. They've had a spectacular season up to this point, and I think this just uh, they just pile it on. Oh, man, guys. So I've been called a Kirk Cousins hater, but – surprisingly I'm going to be the only person on the show to be taking the Minnesota Vikings in the, in the playoffs this week. So, I mean, you look back at their game, they just played a couple of weeks ago, the Vikings versus the giants. And it was in Minnesota. Daniel Jones played, he played good, uh, 334 yards, a touchdown interception. Best game uh, of the season. I'd argue passing wise. His I mean, only passing. game of 30 completions. 
I mean, one passing, of two with 300 yards. I mean, passing yards wise, yeah, but, but I mean, throwing touchdown, wise, yeah. interception, got sacked three times, fumbled it, but didn't lose the fumble. Um, Saquon had a okay game, 14 carries, 84 yards, and a touchdown. But look at this Vikings. Now Kirk had a he had a, a a pretty good game, almost 300 yards, three touchdowns, no interceptions. Uh, Dalvin Cook, 14 for 64. But this is what I look at: Justin Jefferson, 12 receptions for a buck 33 and a touchdown, and T.J. Hawkinson, 13 receptions for 109 yards and two touchdowns. So when I look at that, I, I just I, I gotta say, I don't think Kirk Cousins is gonna um crap the bed here. I think that's gonna be safe for next round. I think his defense will. It could, but I, I think that um I think that they can uh, I think the, the Vikings defense can get a turnover on Daniel Jones. Now uh it depends on when that turnover occurs. If it happens earlier in the game, it might affect the, the outcome of the game heavily, but they would definitely, obviously, you'd want a turnover later in the game. But I think the Vi- the, the Vikings defense can get a turnover on Daniel Jones. Uh, so as long as Kirk plays a, uh, a, a clean game and Justin Jefferson has a big day like he did last time these two teams played, I expect the Vikings to go in there, take care of business on their home fields, and win a playoff game. You know, Brandon. What do you know, Joe? I told you earlier in the season that Kirk Cousins wasn't the issue in Minnesota. He never has been. He never was. Too many fourth quarter game winning drives. Too many comebacks. Too much production. All season long, it's been the defense. In spite of the Giants, one terrible play. In that game in the fourth quarter was a Richie James drop on third and five. He's had a good amount of those this year. And that led to a 55-yard field goal. There were many opportunities in that game. A Daniel Bellinger fumble in the red zone. Daniel John, you talked about Daniel Jones had a fumble as well. The Giants, in spite of Saquon not having a good game, scored 24 points. What does that say about the Vikings defense? What does that say about Daniel Jones? A quarterback who coming into this year was on the rocks, nobody believed in him, most expected him to win no more than six games, to find himself in the postseason, to be an underdog in this matchup on the road. I look at this Giants offense, and all year long, it was, it was built on Saquon Barkley, him being the guy. But I look at Daniel Jones and see a quarterback that, against this Vikings defense, has a real opportunity to show us who he really is. A chance to change a narrative, and on the biggest stage against a top 15, top 12 quarterback, establish himself in the upper echelon in the NFL. I'm not quite exactly the biggest Daniel Jones guy, but the last time he played them, he was awesome. And this is the game for me that will really determine for New York whether or not they're going to give him this pretty big, hefty contract in the offseason or just franchise tag him and look to use him as a bridge. This right here is the biggest game of Daniel Jones' career. And when I look at what he's done this season, let me tell you one thing for sure. I know he believes in himself. And when you have that guy in Brian Dable, the first offensive play caller who's really brought the most out of a, a team, a collection of parts that were miscast, I feel an energy to this Giants team. You talked about Jay Ray. It's a special one. And with what they have from the front seven, you know, Xavier McKinney back off injury, Julian Love at safety. This, for me, might be my favorite game this week in the NFC slate. I, th- I think this is my favorite game of the week, period. This is this is the game of the week. I, I feel like all the other games, while we might have some enticing ones, this is the one that's going to feel like a real playoff experience. Like I said, there's so much on the line here. Uh, Minnesota has to make a decision if they're going to continue with Kirk Cousins or not. Is the window closed for their Super Bowl hopes? And like you said, the Giants, this is a big show for for Daniel Jones, his first playoff appearance here. And he has an opportunity to go into Minnesota, a place that he's already played in this season, and go out there and blow the doors off, you know? This is a big opportunity for the Giants. And and as I said before, I think they're going to seize it. Giants will win this one out. You know what? 
and I'll flip the score. I'll say 27-24 Giants. They lost 27-24 against Minnesota previously. And one more thing. Dory Jackson did not play in their first matchup together. He's trending toward getting out there in this game. What capacity will be at? We're going to find out on Sunday. But just having their, Q, their CB1 out there makes an immediate difference relative to their last matchup. Anything else you guys like to add before we move on to our next game of the week? Let's go Big Blue. Thank you. Yes.